Hello guys and welcome to Supreme Ruler 2030. This is going to be my first ever solo playthrough that I've recorded of a Supreme Ruler game. I ran a poll asking you what campaign I should do to start off the Supreme Ruler 2030 series because Supreme Ruler 2030 has added four campaigns, each of which kind of has a story. And so we're going with Germany. As we can see here, Germany finds itself in the midst of mounting conflicts and tensions due to Russia's actions and the collapse of NATO. To reduce dependence on US aid, Germany takes a proactive stance in restoring peace and stability to Europe, yeah, and surely their own economic control. <laughs> Through a new treaty to unite European nations, under one Germany, of course. Germany aims to counter Russia's escalating hostilities that seek to destabilize the continent. Germany is unwavering in its commitment to restoring peace, no matter the challenges and sacrifices. With determination, Germany leads the charge towards a harmonious and secure Europe. I find this description hilarious because real life Germany is so much more of a, like, bully than this makes them out to be. But we're going to be playing a savior Germany, the Germany the world has always wanted. One where swastikas are not censored with iron crosses. One where Eastern European nations can live and develop their economies without being bullied and pummeled into economic submission by the savior, Germany. Let's begin, shall we? Over the past decade, ongoing conflict over land, economic, and diplomatic disputes has had Europe on the edge of a continental war. As threats from Russia and their allies become more plausible, our government is pushing for a new European alliance to put an end to their political intimidation once and for all. As <laughs> It's so funny, because Germany does almost as much intimidation, they just do it economically. So this is ridiculous. As we move forth with this plan, we will respond to backlash as it comes. But rest assured, Germany will be responsible for bringing peace to all of Europe. This is so noble of them. I'm sure peace means control, realistically, but who knows, maybe by 2030, Germany is actually a good guy. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen in seven years. It's not very likely, but maybe. More information will become available as we proceed, but first we must set up the stepping stones to our alliance. And there we have it. So we hit accept and we start up here. I'm sure there's more pop-ups that are going to pop up, but we have to get this going. Okay, so we have the good old, wow, he looks like a potato in this picture. This guy that replaced Merkel. Looking around the map, we have some interesting situations here. I haven't really examined the full political scope of everything here, but we can see China has, as a colony, Chinese Hong Kong. That seems about fitting. Russia has, as a colony, Russian Crimea. So what did they do here? Ukraine in 2030, they actually restored all the borders. They handled this differently in the 2023 map is something notable, but they kind of kept Crimea as a colony for Russia. And then if we go all the way to America, we'll see four colonies. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no, Battle Goat, how could you do this? When I see her face, all I can remember is when a reporter asked her a question when it came to their three or two trillion dollar spending deal they made. His question was, how are you going to explain to the average American how their money is going to use and how it's worth it when they end up having to spend more on groceries, gas, and their daily expenses due to inflation that will come from your spending deal. And as we know from real life, inflation really did run away after their spending deal. And I remember her response was, they won't have to pay for anything. We're paying for it. So apparently this interview is going to be living in my head nonstop while I play this game in the 2030 scenario because, oh, good God. Anyway, I notice alliance-wise, they've gone a little bit further than just dissolving NATO. Russia doesn't have the CSTO, and America doesn't have any of their other allies because, of course, in real life, they have mutual defense and some amount of alliances with Brazil, Japan, Australia and several other countries, but I see, at least for this campaign, we've just kind of knocked everyone in the world down to no allies. So this is just a discovery for me. This will affect what we're doing. Our objective is be the hero. <laughs> Germany is such an unfitting country for this, bro. <laughs> All right, well then, on the path to turning Germany, Europe's 
biggest economic bully into its one and only political hero, we need to get things set up. And so let's just run through the process. Of course, I'm going to be approaching this as if I'm playing SRU. I have absolutely no idea how my SRU strategies are going to hold up here. So this could go terribly. So let's go ahead and pump my taxes up to max. Because as we know, that is something that I usually do. Social spending, we're going to go through and put everything to 100%. I believe I go over this in some of my SRU guides in case you're wondering why I'm doing something so silly. And as we can see, the prices on social spending are still ridiculous. So that's going all the way down to zero. And currently, we have a balanced budget. But we're going to have to see how that develops with the taxes and everything adjusting. We don't really know the end results, the finalization of all of these numbers. I'm quite curious to see how military AI performs now this long after my beta AI test. I've seen it perform very interestingly for AI countries. So we're gonna set everything on full, high initiative, but of course low losses, leave everything else pretty much stable. Oh, I like this change. They've added color to the supply bar. White for unfilled and blue for filled. That is so much better than how it looked before. This looks actually finalized now. Cool. I have to go ahead and lock off my minister from everything. AI in this game is so good about taking out debt, but we have 14 billion. We don't need debt. So anything I can turn it off. There you go. Just turn everything off. I will handle everything so i started looking over what designs we have i've narrowed things down a little bit this recon was really the only one we had so that's an easy choice the fennec we have the leopard 2a6 and so that's what we're going to use was the only one we had here for anti-tank i've narrowed it down here to the pruma trigat and the trigat just to have like a more static cheaper lower budget option I've, for infantry, I think I'm going to go with the, mm, the Puma. The Boxer's decent. It's a lot cheaper. It's very good for the price. But I kind of want to go full quality here and just have the best possible equipment that I can. So I think that I will get rid of this. God damn it. I'm not used to where all these new buttons are. So I keep adding things when I try to exclude them. But there you go. For artillery, I narrowed it down to the boxer. There wasn't really anything else that we had that had this kind of range. And the closest toad option to have a cheaper option that we had was from the 60s. And I really don't want to pump out artillery from the 60s. I'd rather just pump out the one best thing we have. I do this in every playthrough. I uniformly set up my army. We had this hawk here. This was the only anti-air option we had that could actually hit mid-air targets. So rather than waste a bunch of money on air that can only shoot down helicopters or otherwise technically shoot down planes that come in to attack, because I believe any plane when it goes to attack has to go into close range, I wanted something that could be, I don't know, just it could have the ability to hit everything. This is usually what I go for, a more versatile AA system. And so I went with the Hawk, even though it's from the 60s, we'll have to hopefully replace that. I'm just going to keep all this, maybe. I don't know, some of this stuff is really old. Yeah, a lot of these. We have a German supply truck. What's the cargo capacity here? I don't know how to see stats on this. <laughs> this is... Oh, God, what? They've changed it. And things are not where they used to be. I don't think they're listing it. Cargo capacity, none. Wait, what? Cargo capacity... How do you supply without cargo capacity? Is it just going to come straight from... I don't know. Because that's the whole thing. You load up the cargo capacity with supply. What am I reading? Maybe they're baking the supply into the weight now? Because this one costs in weight twice as much as this one does. And then in military goods it costs that much too? could just be a coincidence but assuming it's baked into the weight now which i don't actually know this for a fact and look at these ones these ones don't have supplies at all this one does i'm very confused on what i'm reading but i'm gonna assume it's baked into the weight now or that the spec sheet is just wrong so we're gonna narrow it down to the one that is the newest and looks the most useful why not i'll have this bridging thing just be here 
Don't know if I'm actually gonna use it, probably not, but I'll have it just be here anyway. Okay, now I'm really starting to think that this is a bug, this nun here over the max cargo, because if I look at a helicopter that can very clearly have a capacity of missiles, there's no max missile size? Really? Really? Because if that was true... Oh, God. Okay, this one has cargo capacity because it doesn't have missiles. Yeah. If that was true, then I would be able to load silo nukes onto this. And that's not possible. So I'm pretty sure that's a bug and we're just not going to be able to see that. It's the game's release. I expected some bugs. That's kind of like why I waited a week. Let the initial patches get out. Hope to have the most bug-free experience possible. Anyway, I'm looking through these two helicopters and I really, really like the Tiger. It's like almost twice the price, but I think it deserves to be. It can do everything better, except shoot ships. This one has a much further range for dealing with ships. So I'm tempted to keep both anyway. Uh, Maybe for now. We only have one interceptor and that's the tornado, so we're stuck with that unless we buy one, like a design, or we research one. We'll figure out what we're going to do there. I'm just kind of like sorting through what we have right now as I usually do in the beginning. Although in SRU, I think I usually started cutting all this stuff out because I've done it so much, but this is 2030. It's a new game. Let's experience it together. We have two tactical bombers. One is the tornado again, probably just repurpose, which is funny. Because if I remember correctly, this game has a refitting option where you can turn, uh, maybe it's multi-rolls, like back and forth, some kind of plane, you can turn back and forth from like interceptor to bomber or whatever. I remember that being a video they put out, but it's been a little bit since. Anyway, looking at this one, yeah, I mean the tornado version is just much better. It's also 12 years newer, so we will exclude the alpha jet. I'm sorry, but you are no longer the alpha. Now, the Eurofighter Typhoon versus the Eurofighter A Typhoon. What's the difference? Oh my god, this is like our best plane by far. What the hell? Forget about interceptors, tactical bombers, all multi role. What is this, the American Air Force? <laughs> That's what we have today with that fucking F 35. I think the A is just newer. It's clearly supposed to be a variant. And based on what I'm seeing, it's supposed to be a variant that's better at shooting things on the ground and then shooting things in the air because its stats are kind of inversed a little bit where it can hit ground targets much better but air targets a little bit worse otherwise these are basically the same planes so i think i'll just leave them both here for now we gotta look at patrol and transport now oh yeah i also noticed that the maintenance on the eurofighter is two billion dollars a year per Eurofighter. I assume it's supposed to be like a squadron of fighters, but holy fuck, we have no strat bombers. Funny. That's funny for Germany. Let's go ahead and exclude all this like 80s designs. We don't need that. I think I'll leave the helicopter just so we have a helicopter recon and then also keep the Eurohawk, which appears to be some kind of a drone. They have very different stats, but they fill two different roles, so might as well keep both of them. Actually, this is a close air target? What the fuck? Oh yeah, I guess the game treats drones as close air targets. That makes sense. So then this one back here is actually a plane, but how much does it cost compared to the Eurohawk? It's very close in price, and it can only see half as far. So I don't think it's actually worth even using that. Because the thing about a helicopter, that's everything that's close range is a helicopter, basically. So it can land wherever the fuck it wants. None of them have any attack values anyway. So, by the way, this is such a handy little button to have. You used to have to go into a menu to do this. Now you don't have to. So we'll just narrow it down to the Eurohawk then. Because it's the same thing. Now here's what's really going to suck. If I can't see the cargo capacity of anything because it's bugged, how the hell am I going to know what the best transport anything is? I just have to guess, like, based on the weight or something? And... Oh god, I hate this button. And things that don't otherwise tell me anything. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead. If it's really old, oh god, 1930. We're just gonna exclude it. Anything that's particularly old just gets excluded. Wow, that already narrows me down to... Wow, okay. But we only have like one fucking helicopter for this? And yeah, I don't even know how much it provides. It has 114 million maintenance. That's pretty cheap though. I think I'll put that on standard. 
Just so that we have some kind of helicopter. Or wait, was there another one? Oh yeah, there's a Sea Stallion. Sea Stallion. It's even older. Oh my god. I think the reason it's like this is because this one can actually defend itself. I think I'll keep the Sea Stallion. I'll keep the bow for now. Yeah, and then we'll narrow the planes down. Because these things kind of do different things. We'll narrow the plane down to, I guess, just the newest and best looking. Because, I mean, again, none of these really defend themselves anyway. Yeah. Oh, there's also range to think of. Yeah, travel speed and range. This one can go much farther. And it costs a similar amount. So, yeah, let's go with that KC-30. I don't want to make... Oh, I keep misclicking this. I'm going to misclick this forever. Another thing I noticed, a funny little bug, if I hit excluded, it thinks I don't have the design anymore and asks if I want to add it to the research queue. I don't know if that actually does anything. It doesn't add here. And it, yeah, it doesn't add here, so that's just broken. Okay. <laughs> wow, handling missiles is going to be really easy. We only have one missile. The Kept 350. And it launches from sub, naval, air, and land. And that's it. It's just one missile that we have. Okay, well that really simplifies that now, doesn't it? Ships, though. Okay, we don't have any capital ships and any carriers. I guess that's kind of accurate. At least they didn't put escort ships as capital ships like they did with the U.S. Navy and Supreme World Ultimate. <laughs> Something that's confusing me more and more is that in Supreme World Ultimate, there was an ASW attack. There was a submarine attack. And there's submarine specifically attacking types of units, like that helicopter we saw that had the very long naval range. I bet that has great ASW values. But I don't see anything indicating the ASW value that anything has, even on the escorts. Anti-sub equipped. All right, but where's my ASW value? There's literally a spot here where you would imagine the ASW indicator would go. And I'm realizing it has never been on the 2030 sheets for the entire time that I played the beta, and it's still not here. So I'm confused. Either it's a bug, like it's a mistake, and they forgot to put it here, which would be weird. Or they've merged ASW into surface attack, which would make like World War II capital ships overpowered in fighting submarines. Or they put this to say, hey, it can fight subs, but then they intentionally don't tell you the value capable of capturing. What the hell? I can capture ships? I don't know, but it's going to be really, really weird to pick out my primary escort ship without having any idea what ASW value they have. Mystery solved. This appears to be some kind of bug, because if I hover over a unit and see the tooltip of it, I can see its ASW value. I can't show you because it's on the tooltip. I can't hover over a tooltip. But it says here, for example, 11 damage, 2 subs, 124 inferior French units. So, now we have a better idea of what we're looking at. Okay, cool. Yes, and now I can look back at these helicopters and see that this has a 6 damage to subs. Okay, hopefully this gets fixed, because I don't usually look here. There's usually not information like this in SRU. I think this is pretty new to show this much information blown up to be this readable and this usable. I know there was some information, but not the really usable stuff. So I always open this, so I need that to be here. It was still really tricky to do with these spec sheets, but I've narrowed it down to the Valor and the Gowron for these escorts. They're very weird. I, I kind of just want to research something to replace them as soon as possible. Oh, I've also found the cargo. The cargo space is showing correctly on the tooltip, just not on the final spec sheet. So that could maybe allow me to figure things out. Yeah. Oh no, not favorite. Excluded, please. So 240. 192, 240. Okay, it seems like I just generally made the correct decision. There's not many good options for patrol boats at the moment, so I picked two. The PB-57, which was very similar to others, like P-76 and whatnot, because it has missile capacity and some ability to engage ships. I might get rid of it, though. And this PCS for its ASW capability, which is 9, and it's better than nothing. Transports, I've narrowed down a little bit. I'll probably do it more to just this stuff right here. Again, might narrow it down more. And with that done, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna turn on auto build because especially while I'm not really familiar with the schematics here, this is, I find, a decent enough way to see how the AI treats things and then 
I can narrow down or change or set in some manual builds if I want. Speaking of units, actually, I've immediately gone ahead and started researching the naval engineer because we don't start out with it. And I might honestly just see if I can, like, buy it or something. Oh, Kamala. But I need... <laughs> oh, my own suggestion comes to haunt me. I can't see what I can buy without a treaty. <laughs> Oopsie. Actually, I noticed America loves me. Basically, every single NATO country, former NATO at this point, loves me. Oh my god, eight colonies. Meaning I can potentially start building together a new NATO right from the start here. At the very least, who's the most technologically advanced country in the world that's probably immediately willing to give me research cooperation, among other things. Hmm. I can literally get every single treaty with America, including a formal alliance, at the start of the game. Well, I'm gonna do that then, because then I can see everything they have, maybe buy stuff from them and just, yeah. And then if there's some dynamism to maybe Russia attacking me, this will help scare them away from that. And it's a great way to test if the game's AI has improved since my beta AI test and see if America's actually able of going across the ocean or not. Yeah, sure, let's do it. I can go ahead and get everything with Canada as well. I'll do that, but not research cooperation. Um, wait, not even, not even research sharing. Why did I put this here? Yeah, no. I just, I mean, if anything, I want to see what they have, but not actually share anything. So just everything except the research things. And I can go around at the start of the game. I don't know if this is going to break the campaign or anything, but with the way everybody, yeah, feels at the start here. Oh my, who's this? I can go ahead and rebuild NATO and then some before the game has even started. This seems... I mean, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm <laughs> so I'm going through and I'm up to Estonia now, kind of worked up around this way. Norway doesn't like me for whatever reason, unlike everybody else, but everybody else, as we can see, does. And they're all just accepting with me from the very beginning here, full everything. I'm only getting research from America. That's just going to be a one way kind of deal. Even more up to date things like Finland and, you know, Sweden love me enough to join immediately as if they were already in NATO. Just Norway's different for some reason. And fuck dude, Ukraine's not at war. And I think if the weapons deposits or... I don't know how to describe it, but the amount of military gear that these countries start out with, if that's anything similar in this scenario as it is in the other ones, they've given Ukraine quite a lot of things so i'm gonna invite them to that formal alliance of course immediately as i go around and just form is this cheat like am i gonna break the game by doing this is only really one way to find out okay i don't understand this one serbia loves me enough to be an okay well welcome to nato serbia <laughs> All right, so I've done this with like a hundred countries now. And so let's look at the map again. As you see, I have the oil map up and there is a reason for this. This is because I mentioned that I was going to research naval engineers. Well, here's the reason because I know we need oil. Look at the production right now. It's not enough. We're not making enough. We have no oil derricks. We have 16 oil gas fields. And then like, that's it. We need more. We have some more on land, but all of this is unclaimed and your distance to it doesn't matter, I believe. All you need are naval engineers. One naval engineer means one hex you can claim, means you can put whatever you want down on there. And so if I just rush out some naval engineers, I don't know how good the AI is about doing this, I can claim as many of these international oil spots as I want, and they're like right in my backyard and easy to reach, and hell, there's more over by Canada and everything if I want to just sail over there, <laughs> because, I mean, it's probably possible, it just depends on the distance, 10, yeah, these can go far enough, so I'm about to probably try to exploit a new mechanic. So I had to get dinner, so I left, and then I came back, and I loaded up the game, and all of these alliances immediately went through. New research gained, 
has filled my screen. And now I have a pop-up, a new beginning. Make alliances with France, Italy, Poland, Hungary, and Romania. NATO has been allowed to crumble through internal divisions, so we must now establish a true European alliance to defend against Russian aggression. Through some off-the-record meetings, we have identified several nearby countries that share our same goal, but need more convincing. We won't be able to proceed with our plan without their help and allegiance, so it would be advised that we make them some offers they can't refuse and get them on our side. Once we have France, Italy, Poland, Hungary, and Romania on our team, we can continue to the next phase. Um, status complete. Yeah, because I've done that. Let's just go ahead and unpause at normal. And yeah, we could just see all the alliances pouring in. I, I might as well just let them continue. Okay, yeah, there you go. Using our alliance with Ukraine... Wait, was this even part of this? No, this is just random. I think I broke the campaign so much, dude. <laughs> Using our alliance with Ukraine, we can assist them in finally reclaiming control of Crimea and driving the Russian occupiers from the Crimean Peninsula. Take back Crimea for your new ally via proxy. What do you mean via proxy? Oh my god. They're at war with Russian Crimea. Dude, I just skipped ahead of so many fucking scripts and steps with my fucking nonsense. I haven't even gotten to look at research yet. I have 66 allies. There's still probably more that are going to show up. And I haven't even looked at research. Look at all of this shit. What have I done? Battle Goat, why do you let me do this? I'm just using my normal SRU strategies. What is this? A pledge to Ukraine as the tension between Russia and the Ukraine and the Ukraine. Oh, increases. Ukraine has asked for our support of our alliance after unanimous vote, really, of 66 nations or 67, actually. Ukraine is our newest member. Wait, what do you mean? Taking this public stance on the issue may have its consequences, so we must be ready for our defenses for any conflict that results from this decision. Oh, so they've made alliances with each other. It's scripted because they don't have an organization system. They just all made an alliance with each other. Oh, and Ukraine has 14... Four, what? How do you have 14 allies? Now I've been scrambling for the past five minutes to try to figure out why the ability to expand alliances isn't over here. I forgot they moved it over here. Let's go break my neck real quick. Um, it's one of these. Here you go. Uh, let's hide the colonies. And no dead factions. Wait, why does it say 14? Oh, because it's including all the colonies. You know, that's weird. In SRU, there was a way to kind of filter that out over there. Well, okay, so France, me, Hungary, Italy, Poland, Romania. So they got like a little, okay, connection. Well, that's... What the hell have I done, dude? Just unpause a little bit more. I want to get to the end of the first day and see what happens. Is it like, are we good? Well, no, we're not good. Ukraine's at war with Russian Crimea. I didn't know this was making a choice. I just, yeah, exactly. Next day, look at this spam. I just made allies with everyone that would make allies with me. That's it. Oh, it's down to 50. Oh, is it filtering now? Okay, it's filtering now. Okay, that's good. Oh, no, it depends on my setting here, and then it filters. Oh, what's it at now then? 74. Oh my god. Okay, well. Yeah, I've accidentally, without intending to, at the start of the campaign, started armed conflict in Eastern Europe between Ukraine and Russian Crimea. Russia's not directly involved. They have the biggest, scariest military bar. What the hell have I done? I wasn't even done setting up. I haven't looked at my research. I'm only researching naval engineers. I don't even know what research I have now. What is this? What have I done? I have no idea. One way or another, uh, it's safe to say that I've already completely broken the campaign by just doing the normal stuff I do in Supreme Ruler multiplayer. So I've actually done a little bit less than I otherwise would have, to be honest. But we'll continue this in episode two. Great. So we got our setup out of the way mostly, except for research. And I've accidentally started a new second Ukrainian war. Oh no, Crimea is independent now. It's not Russian Crimea anymore. It's Crimea. That's how they made this work. What the hell have I done to the world? I don't know. That's it for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.